Hi, welcome to this short video about um, Zimmer Peacock's Sensor to API workflow. So by Sensor to API, we mean taking sensor data and sending it to the cloud and allowing other people to call upon that data using an application programming interface. So let me dive into it a little bit deeper. So at ZP, we have a whole range of biosensors. We have off-the-shelf biosensors, um, and we also develop sensors as part of a program for clients um, if we don't have those sensors. So for example, we have glucose sensors so we can develop um, applications around measuring glucose in food, for example, or veterinary applications, or we have um, testosterone sensors so we can measure testosterone in blood if it was so required. We have cortisol sensors so measure, maybe measuring cortisol in sweat. So we have a whole range of sensors. Um, and then we also have this capability of um, application program interface or API and what we can do therefore is take those sensors marry them up with our electronics send the data to the cloud via um, an app and then allow or well, process that data turn that data into information then allow other people to call upon that data using this API or this application programming interface so let me dive a little bit more into this so here are the sensors that we have these are off our web um, store at the moment you know there's over 30 sensors uh, on that web store. Um, they sometimes look like this. We can do this in more than this form factor, but this is one of the form factors that we commonly use. This particular sensor is sort of seven millimeters by 20 millimeters. We would expect you to kind of have the sample on the sensor as indicated here. A typical volume might be 50 microliters or 30 microliters. And once we start putting microfluidics on top of that, then it can be you know, much smaller than this for one microliters left or one microliters, for example. Then we have the electronics. We do expect the sensor to um, be in the electronics. At the moment, I'm showing the kind of meter format. Um, but at the same time, we do have different platforms or wearable and implantable, for etc. But um, the electronics always remain the same. It's just the form factor um, may change. Then we have the app itself. So the app of this entire workflow is always the simplest thing, but we have an app and the app has um, the capability of talking to the meter. So the app is mounted on a smartphone, uh, sorry, a smart device. We prefer to use Android because it's easier to develop upon Android. Um, and we make a Bluetooth connectivity to the meter and the meter, what the meter is doing is the meter takes the sensor, the meter is told by the app what to do. The um, meter runs, collects the raw data and then sends it back to the app. Um, at this point now, the app is actually, or the user is able to upload the data, and they can upload it to a proprietary database called Julie. So if you Google Julie um, with the D here, then you'll find a um, online database. Um, you can actually sign up for a freemium version, um, and this database is able to receive electrochemical data. Now in the um, in Julie, then you can actually see um, our um, sorry our data. Oh, sorry, your data, you can see the raw data and you and we use it for sort of storing, sharing, analyzing raw data. But um, there are generally sort of two stages to this. The first thing is we can do qualification. Is the um, raw signal in line with what the molecule should be? So um, depending on, on the actual um, assay itself, we can have different types of signals and these signals can be indicative of the molecule. So we can do a sort of qualification, say, is that the right molecule? And then we could do a quantification, um, how much um, of that molecule is, is um, in the sample, for example, or is that person a sort of positive and negative with respect to a disease? So there's lots of ways of qualifying or quantifying rather, um, either just positive and negative, which is the sort of simplest way, or actually um, almost analog, uh, putting a concentration and a scale on that. Now the next part now is really the um, API. So if you look back into Julie, there's actually a, um, a little tab or a little button up there, and that's our Julie API. So our Julie API or application program interface allows developers to unlock their creativity. Because what we're expecting is um, each application in each region, there'll be a specific language, there'll be a specific look and feel, there'll be a specific branding. There's all things that um, other companies want to sort of take care of. Um, and so we've developed an API where you can call upon us, you know, as long as you've got the right credentials, you can, you can call upon our cloud, you can sort of generate um, lists to understand what's actually in the cloud. 
um, in the jewelry, and then you could actually um, essentially fetch uh, specific pieces of um, data or information from Julie. So Julie is really a way of allowing other companies, other entrepreneurial businesses to call upon our stack of technologies and start making a product upon um, Julie. So if you have any questions for Zimmer Peacock regarding our sensor to API platform, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us um, at ZP. Okay, thank you very much.